The uh, commentator, uh, James Lesueur, is a uh, professor of history at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. He's the uh, introducer of Mouloud Ferraoun's works and also Henri Alex's The Question into the English Language. He's uh, uh, the author of uh, uh, several books on, uh, on Algeria, including uh, most recently Algeria since 1989, Between Democracy and Terror, published with uh, Z Books in 2010. Uncivil War, Intellectuals and Identity Politics During the Decolonization of Algeria, um, first published in 2001 uh, with the University of Pennsylvania Press and again uh, in the second edition with the University of Nebraska Press in 2005. Uh, James, the, the floor is yours and I think uh, uh, you are expected to, to speak from here, right? I think so. Excellent. Thank you for the introduction, and uh, it's hard to follow up on three brilliant papers, right? I have the unfortunate task of looking uh, rather shabby compared to my colleagues, so it's <laughs> I hope you, uh, hope you will uh, agree with me that what you've seen is kind of a display of the new talent that's out in the room, right? Um, I'm one of the older professors who's been teaching this topic for over 25 years, I think, and, and I have, I was mentioning earlier, um, you know, my old pirated copy of the Battle of Algiers, which I used to show in the 1980s or 1990s on the VHS tape, and then was happy when the Pentagon screened it and they gave us the new DVD edition so I didn't have to show a ripped off copy from long ago. Um, <coughs> and I think that what I'd like to say first is just kind of generalize the comments about the three papers and how they might fit together, right? I do have to make a, a statement that I happen to have had the privilege of meeting two of the presenters before. Um, I was at an NEH seminar this summer, um, and Nicole and Jessica were both participants in the, in the NEH seminar source, so we got to hang out for a few days in Oregon, at Oregon State, and it was quite fabulous. And it's one of the other uh, people that was, was there was uh, uh, Reda Bismaya, the, the retired professor from Brown, is quite, quite prominent. Um, and I think what's, what I'd like to kind of start with here is to say we have three papers from the next generation. Um, it's sad, actually, when you're an older person looking down and looking at the past and realizing these new terms are cropping up, like millennium, right? Uh, <laughs> like Cinepop, things I haven't really thought about before. Um, and at the same time, you know, I, d I have to say that my generation, the generation that's been doing this for a couple decades now, isn't bothered by having new terms given to us that we can reanalyze our old ways of doing business. Uh, and I think it's really helpful to have new perspectives. And what, what also come to, came to mind, I think, in, in listening to the presentations is actually seeing the, seeing the presentations, is just how interesting the material is that people are working on now, right? Um, and I think that, that what's really come out of the three presentations together is that there's a lot of discussion on the, on the floor about how one teaches the, uh, the French Algerian War. And this is a pet peeve, I mentioned this before, but I call it the French Algerian War, not the Algerian War. And for a very, very simple reason, France has fought many different wars, and so has Algeria. has fought other wars besides France. <laughs> so to limit it as the Algerian conflict seems, seems to be, I mean, just straight up in terms of pedagogy a problem. And most Algerian historians, and I consider myself an Algerian historian too, take issue with that. And, it, and it's really important to kind of point that out at the beginning. And uh, if you notice in the talks, that kind of new way of discussing things has already been, uh, been, uh, been taken, taken for, um, how would you say, been put in practice. So these three papers present the next generations of ideas and different elements, all focusing on this issue of pedagogy and education. Um, each of them bring up these new intriguing gaps that most of the older people like myself have forgotten or missed, right? Um, and also, they ask us to kind of fill in certain moments and certain elements of that pedagogy. And in doing so, they ask us to re-examine re history and historical memory from both the Algerian perspective and the French perspective. And then, in another perspective, the mixed uh, immigrant perspectives in France. The three kind of main issues are Jews of Algeria, the Burrs of France, and then film, democracy, uh, uh, film as a documentarians as vict vectors of memory. A couple of other things that kind of jumped out at me in terms of the, the language that was used 
is that each of these asked us to politicize certain ways of teaching history. Um, <clears throat> all three papers asked us to ask ourselves, therefore, what it means to teach Algerian history in this complicated post-colonial era that we live in. The classroom is the place where this happens. But as you've seen just now, the classroom isn't confined to the space of a class. The classroom becomes society on in, in, uh, uh, in a bigger scale, both, both in the post-colonial world and also in the metropole, in France itself. The novel, um, history, and film all help us think about how you think about the classroom as being both a space, a physical space, and a cultural space. And I think the three papers together collectively help us assess that and how we're going to work, about, how, we're, how we'll think about this. So again, an old guard person looking at this finds it quite refreshing and innovative, which means that there are novel approaches being asked or presented, and they ask us how to locate memory. That's one of the kind of themes that the three papers address, and the, uh, the politicization of memory itself. The role of culture and arts is important in all three of the papers. In Jessica's paper, there's a focus on kind of what we call intellectual history, right? And there's a very heavy emphasis in the paper itself on the intellectual debates about what it means to be a Jew in, in Algeria during decolonization. At the same time, she talks about the question of binaries, right? And the binary nature of decolonization for those of people who emerged from my generation tended to present decolonization from a Christian or European versus Muslim point of view. And I think the insertion of the Jewish question really raises some really important elements that were forgotten or overlooked, which now this new generation of historians are really focusing on, and I think with great effect. The immigrants also have a kind of interesting nature of identity, contesting both the Frenchness, right, and the immigrant nature of their identity itself. In other words, they inherited nature from their families, they inherited problems from their families. At the same time, <coughs> the films that we just saw, I've never seen that, the, those, film before, those films before, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if you have either, but I've never seen them, which is great. That's why we have these new scholars presenting this kind of material, which now, for those of us teaching, you know, I have must, I have the entire script for the Battle of Algiers memorized, right? I mean, how many times have you showed it in your class? 200, 300? I, I teach a class called Algeria in France, and I teach it two times a year, 45 students in, in each class, and I think I've showed it now at least 100 separate times, but I've never had the occasion to show those little clips. And I think what it demonstrates for us is just how much interesting material there is for our scholars to work with. Now, <coughs> the, the Jessica's paper, which I'll start with first, is about the imperialism of uh, the, the French imperial project and how Jewish leaders reacted to the issue of decolonization and inserted themselves in this contested space. It's interesting because the, 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 the decree, the Chermio decree, is one of these decrees that for Algerian historians, it's always presented certain kinds of problems. The problem being, for Algerian historians looking at this issue, is that most people were kind of unsympathetic with it, right, for certain reasons, because of it left Muslims out of the citizenship question for so long, right? Well, one of the things that kind of comes to mind is what was the effect of the Nazi period in North Africa, right? And this is something that we're going to talk about, I think, in a, in a minute. One of the things that, that she mentioned quite, quite, I think, very effectively is that decolonization presents us with this kind of understudied terrain. And French Muslims, if you want to call them that, in this period, often, um, I think, pose Jewishness as a, as, a, as a problem, right? And I think that Jessica rightly points out that <coughs> Jewishness was a problem even for Jews in Algeria, right? In other words, it wasn't a given at, in itself because it was given to them, citizenship was given to them through this decree, and it compromised them, which I think is really interesting in her paper because 
during the, the war in, in 1955 and 56, as they have these uh, reflections on the history of the decree, right? There is an ambivalence about recognizing the, the decree because that decree connects them to France in the precise moment in time when their identity was being shaped by these uh, other outside forces, decolonization. So to link themselves so clearly to French interests put them at odds with the Algerian interests, right? And I think that what her paper shows with you know, great resource is that this conflict was something that really affected how Jews talked about themselves. And it also affected how the FLN talked about Jews. Then the added, I think, really interesting point that she brings up is it also affected how the, the state of Israel addressed this issue as well. And I think one of the things that she mentions is Israel's role in asking Jews to recognize an identity, right, that was outside the French identity, compromised them in a very specific way because it, it reinforced the binary nature of their identity in France, which means for her in her paper <coughs> that the French question, the question of being Jewish during the era of decolonization, really compromised the Jews in a very specific way to the point that in 1961, as the FLM was clearly going to lead the revolution forward, Jews were told they could not travel to Israel, right? And it's a very interesting moment in time where the Jews have already realized that they would be captives in this era, this post-colonial era, to a point where they couldn't travel, right? And express solidarity with, the, with an entity that would somehow erode their, their relationship to this new state, right? At the same time, all citizens of France in 1961, right, were subject, or Algeria, were subject to the same kind of harassment, right? Either you had to accept the Algerian identity, right, and you would accept Algerian citizenship in 1961, or you wouldn't be there, right? You would have no recourse other than to leave, which I think, in a certain sense, their experience is also the experience of Europeans, but it's very different because they have an idea that being European somehow protects them, right? In an era where being European is the very thing that alienates you, right? And it's a really interesting moment. And she, she raises several really interesting um, elements of the story, this amount of uh, um, appeal, the role of Israel, and also the FLN's xenophobic position on the state of Jews. I did think, though, that there needed to be a little bit more about the Vichy period, very specifically. Right. Okay, Lindsay's paper is an eloquent discussion about how the post-colonial identity of Europeans <coughs> is compromised in an era where they are contesting what it means to be French as immigrants. And I found that the novel, right, and this is one of the things that we use all the time. The novel is where the memory activists, as she calls them, focus their attention. And there's a certain kind of legitimacy of writing the role of Burr intellectuals who are carving out for themselves this contested space vis-a-vis -vis France. France. The novel becomes the primary vehicle for contesting Frenchness and at the same time expressing it. And I think that's kind of one of the more interesting points. Which means that by 1961, the event that's in focus in this is the very event, event that was re revealed to be such a catastrophic event for Algerians when the police massacre somewhere around 300 Algerians in Paris. So how the Burrs represent that conflict and the violence of that particular conflict is amazing, right? But at the same time, there are politics. And one of the things I thought th about Lindsay's paper that was quite interesting is the absence of historical discussions. In other words, the novel becomes the vehicle for talking about identity and expressing concerns and history that wasn't being taught. Well, what about the Papon affair, right? The Papon trial. Because if you remember, for those of us who are you know, working and practicing um, historians, the Papon trial is one of the things where you 
that was the first real true revelations of what had happened in 1961. And I remember being a young professor and being really moved by an archivist who had actually broke the law and released the documents that revealed what had Papel had done as a police commissioner, right? At the same, so in other words, you have the use of history and the novel becomes a vector of memory, but at the same time, I would like to see a little bit more historical discussions of things like the Papillon Affair and how historians also played a role, Burr historians in particular, how they might have played a role in, in assessing and bringing to uh, the public's attention the crimes of the past, right? The other part that I thought was, that, that was interesting, and I think this is a larger question about intellectuals in France, is that Burr intellectuals are becoming just that. They are becoming intellectuals. This is important because it's in the context of the, in the 1980s, the very era when prominent French intellectuals like Bernard Henri Lévy projected the death of the intellectual, right? And if you know the intellectual history of France, it was really problematic because Bernard Henri Lévy said that one of the things that's happening in France is that the French intellectuals after Sartre and de Beauvoir are dead, right? So as a species, they're in decline, but in reality, right? They're on the rise. They just don't look like the traditional French intellectual anymore. And so I've always found it kind of odd, right, that someone like Henri Lévy would actually proclaim the death of the intellectual just as the intellectual was beginning to express, you know, identity coming from elsewhere, right? And it's really an issue, and I think that in your paper, for example, you can really play that up and really talk about the marginalization of the burrs at the same time that they're becoming much more powerful, right? And it's really, I think it's something that, that could be quite effective because in my view, and this is the view of most people who work on literature, right? Um, is that by the 1980s and 1990s, post-colonial literature has revivified French literature, right? Uh, post-colonial literature becomes the thing that most people cite as the, 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 um, the saving grace of French literature today, right? Most novels read in France, many of them are written by post-colonial writers from previous, you know, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, etc. And so I think that you could use those kinds of things of, of, of memory precisely when the notion of being French is so contested, right? Okay. Now, <coughs> in the, so the other thing it, that I think you could talk about is <coughs> do a little bit more comparative work with other immigrant writers, Turkish writers in Germany, right? Uh, since, you know, comparative literature is one of the, your specializations, um, you know, the, the Pakistanis in, in the UK, right? In other words, how have other immigrant groups also affected dominant literature in Europe, right? and broaden it out just a little bit.